Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of Dream Water Fish! And today I'm going to show you guys how to make your own fish food. Um, the reason why I wanted to start doing this is because, well, first of all, the fish food that you can buy commercially um, I'll have some fillers in there, so it's like every bite of your fish takes is just less nutritious. And also, if you're feeding fish that eat a lot, like predator fish, they eat a lot, so the costs tend to add up together. Again, like there are some good stuff that you want your fish to have, but they're not usually included in the ingredients of all of these fish foods. So what you could do is to just buy different brands and look at the back of the packages to make sure that you have a bit a good mix of well different kinds of ingredients but it's just easier to well it's not easier it's just better to make your own food because you can start from human grade food and also customize it according to your fish need so for go fish or omnivorous fish meaning they eat both meat and vegetables you can um, aim for two parts meat and one part vegetables. For carnivores, you would aim for um, mostly just meat. For vegetarian fish or herbivores, um, then you want to aim for one part meat and one part vegetable. That's a general rule of thumb. The portion also changes according to your fish age because when the fish are younger, they tend to need more protein as their building blocks to grow and to develop properly. So you will probably put um, more weight on the protein. But as fish ages, um, such as goldfish, and you can start to slowly cut down the meat portion and then increase up the um, vegetarian portion. So now we can talk about the ingredients for the fish. For the protein, I chose um, tilapia and chicken breast. Well, do not judge me that I use chicken breast because I tried to get some beef heart from a local butcher store, but they ran out of it. Beef heart is a pretty uh, traditional ingredient for make your own fish food. Um, however, when you prepare beef heart, you want to make sure that you strip away all the fat and only use the lean meat for uh, making your food because too much fat can cause fatty liver disease in these fish and it's um, not sustainable, basically. Other meat options are usually um, water-based animal protein, so you can get tilapia, you can get um, shrimp. I wouldn't go with fatty fish options just because it's too much fat, again, uh, and may cause other diseases down the stream. Um, the reason why I use chicken breast to substitute is because chicken breast is another, another good source of protein. It, ha it is very lean, it has very low fat percentage and very high protein percentage, so it's another good option to go with, but I wouldn't use too much of it. Um, some vegetable options are included here, so I have some um, well, vegetables that I got from frozen vegetable section. So there's broccoli, there's cauliflower, there's some carrots and red bell peppers. So the reason why I chose carrots is because it has a lot of carotene in it and red bell pepper has, you know, similar stuff. So any vegetables basically that looks red, you can include them in the diet. This is because it's going to help them enhance their natural red and orange color. Um, other good options for vegetables are green peas, as everybody knows, green peas is a natural laxative for fish, especially for goldfish, so it's going to help with their digestive system and also help with maybe some quote-unquote swim bladder issue, but if your fish truly has a swim bladder disease, it's not going to be cured by green peas. Well, another thing that you need to pay attention to is that you need to peel all of them. You need to get rid of the crust because it's not digestible. So for this little bit of green pea, it took me like a good 20 minutes. So another good option to um, do it is to buy baby food. You can buy green pea baby food, organic. Basically there is nothing in there. It's just water and green pea that's grind up together so you don't have to peel them. And sometimes they're adding a little bit of other vegetables. So that's an easier way to go to save you some time and labor. Other options that you can include that I don't have here are spinach, water lettuce. Um, those two vegetables are pretty good as well. Uh, you can also include spirulina. Basically, it's um, it's a good, well, quote-unquote vegetarian source, and it's good for color enhancement. Basically, it's something that you find in green water, <laughs> as my channel's name. Um, so, as some of you might have known, if you keep fish in green water, they tend to get more colorful. The reason is 
they are eating a lot of spirulina. Well, I have some carbs here. That's just you know oatmeal. I put some garlic in there because it's generally good for goldfish and some other fish as well. I put some frozen blueberries as well because it's a lot of good antioxidants. Um, and supplement wise, you can buy um, Astaxian. That thing you can get from um, local health store. It's a very strong ingredient to enhance your fish red coloration. Um, but it's not totally necessary. Some people even use paprika to enhance orange coloration. You can do one, um, not both because it's not necessary. You just have one um, is enough to help with the coloration. Since I want to go with everything natural, so I'm just going to go with carrots and red bell pepper. Plus I'm going to mix in some um, pellets in their diet. So those pellets all have these ingredients. Um, vitamin wise, if you are concerned about diet being not balanced, you can buy vitamin supplements for freshwater or marine fish. You can easily find them uh, in local pet store, pet store or online. But I think that's only necessary if you're fleet feeding them exclusively with your homemade food because it's hard to balance everything up when you're making everything from scratch. Another good way to go is to mix up all the ingredients every time you make them. So for example, this time I'm using this kind of vegetables and next time I'm gonna put some spinach and water lettuce and maybe some other vegetables that have red colorations just to mix it up and protein you can also mix it up. So um, it helps with a balanced diet. The last thing you need is gelatin. It's just something that you use to make your jello. Um, you want to go for something that's unflavored because you don't want any flavors in there. All you need is just one package. It's good for two cups of food. So this is all you need. And a blender, of course. So the first step is to chop up everything, especially the meats. It's going to make it um, easier to blend. I guess you can chop up the vegetables too if you want. So I'm just going to do that and show you guys later. All right, all the food has been chopped up and ready to go. So I will blend ingredients one by one. I will probably blend uh, the proteins together first. It might be a little bit tough to do without water, so you can add a little bit of water. So this is the consistency that you want it to be. Um, I actually didn't use any water. Um, all you need to do is just to press the lowest speed and pulse it until it mix up pretty evenly. Alright, the next step is to take out all the meat and then blend all the veg vegetable options together. And I'll show you guys after it's done. So I scoop out the meat. That's a mixture of chicken breast and tilapia. Kind of reminds me of fish ball for hot pot, if you know what I mean, guys. Okay, so this is the final product of everything mixed up together, vegetable-wise. I ended up adding two whole eggs. Um, I forgot to mention this, but adding eggs, well, first of all, it's a good protein source, also a little bit of cholesterol source, and also its consistency is very good for binding things together. And lastly, when you're trying to mix up all the vegetables together, it could be hard to uh, make them into puree consistency. Um, so instead of adding water, you can add eggs instead to make it much easier to mix together. Um, so the next thing is to mix all the meat and the vegetables together and I'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards. So this is what it looks like after you mix all the meat together with the vegetables. Now the next step is to take a package of the gelatin, mix it in hot boiling water. Mix it well. Um, I use about one cup of water. You can use less if you want it to be um, less runny and more solidy. Um, it's up to you how much water you want to add in the end, but um, yeah. So then you want to mix it well, make sure that it's um, all mixing in the water mostly. And then after that's done, you can pour that into the mixture here and mix it all up together again and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards alright so this is the final consistency that you want after you mix everything together and you can make it a little thicker if you want the next thing to do is to set them 
So what you need to do is to pour them into a shallow sheet. Make sure you don't pour too thick of it because it'll be a little bit more difficult to cut them into some smaller portions to feed a fish. And then you just let it stay in the fridge for a couple hours, maybe two. That should be enough. And I'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards. So I ended up pouring them onto three different plates. You can use a plate if you want to. Um, and I made it pretty thin, like this much so that they don't get too thick and it'll be kind of hard to cut them off. So now I'm gonna set them into the fridge for two hours and take them out and cut them up later and I'll show you afterwards. So this is after maybe five, six hours of being in the fridge and now it's all juicy, like bouncy, like jello. So yeah, now you just need to cut it up and then it's ready to go. Or you can uh, spread them out, put them in the freezer for overnight, and then um, you can just put them in a Ziploc bag and it won't stick together. And I'll show you guys how to do this. First of all, you need to cut it up into bite size. So this is what it looks like after you cut them up. You can cut them into bite size, and they're basically just like ugh, jello. Now you can spread all of them on a baking sheet to freeze them up if you want. Basically this is how you make um, fish food for your own fish. Instead of putting the food directly in the fridge to let it chill and then freeze it later, you can also put them in a freezer bag and just push them, crush them into a very thin slice and then just put them in a freezer directly and every time you feed them you can just break it off and feed them um, quite easily. Um, now let's talk about the advantage of making um, your own fish food. Now first of all, it's gel food, so it's uh, good for your fish digestive system. It's very easy for them to digest. The food sinks right away into the water. Um, it does not really cloud the water. Pretty easy to feed them and fish tend to like them a lot because they taste better. They're just not artificial like hard pellets. Um, Second of all, you get to control what exactly you want to put in the food. You get to control the ingredients. You get to control the protein percentage. You get to add supplements. You get to tailor to the fish meat and to modify the diet. So I thought that's a great advantage of making the food yourself. Now, third of all, the cost. So um, if you buy a um, bag of Saki Hikari goldfish pellets, that's about like 11 12 to like $22 per bag, depending on the, uh, the type, depending on where you buy it, depending on the sources, depending on where you are. Um, so a bag of pellets for my fish probably lasts, I don't know, a month or so a month or two that's only seven ounces but if I make my own food um, I think today I made about two pounds at least of food um, that cost me about seven or eight bucks and that amount of food can probably last my goldfish about um, probably one month as well so in terms of the cost it's probably cheaper um, if you compare it to some high-end goldfish food products. Um, now I know there's also kind of a half-made uh, gel food for goldfish, rapashi green. It's pretty good as well. Um, it's pre-made, it's easier to make, but it's a little bit on the pricey side of course because it's pretty much made for you. Um, some people complain about the smell. I haven't tried it yet so I can't really tell you. Um, now the cons about making the fish food yourself is that, well first of all, it takes a lot of planning, it could be quite messy, and also if you don't know what you're doing, um, it might be a little bit, you know, overwhelming for you. And you don't, you shouldn't buy ingredients all at once, you should just shop around and see what kind of food is on sale and then just switch it up so it's just more annoying, more time consuming. So this is the end of the video, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please feel free to subscribe to my channel, I put on new videos every week and um, also feel free to check out my Instagram and Facebook, I put them down below in the description box. I'll see you guys next week, bye!